Hello world, it, it is Monday, February 27th, 2012. Hope everybody's having a great start to their week so far. Um, today, before I get into the meat of my video today, which is going to be my review of the final season of Battlestar Galactica, um, I really want to take this moment to say that uh, I just found out today, I don't know how recent the news is or anything, that uh, Janice Jan Bernstein, uh, one of the co-creators of the Bernstein Bears, uh, died recently at age 88 from uh, stroke. Uh, I just want to say rest in peace and my thoughts and condolences go out to the family. Um, the reason why I bring this up was because when I was growing up as a kid, the Bernstein Bears was such a kind of like a very pivotal part of my childhood. I remember going into, you know, you know, going to the library back in elementary school and like, you know, when I started reading and getting really into books and the books that I would always gravitate towards to were Bernstein Bears, you know, I was always going to the library, go to the section with the Bernstein Bears, see if there's any new Bernstein Bears books I haven't read yet. And I would read them out because I was just those books were such a very a vital part of my childhood. And I just want to say thank you to Janice and her husband Stan, who passed away a few years ago, for being for creating such a for creating those books and making them such a valuable part of my childhood. So again, my thoughts and condolences go out to their families and stuff like that. So on a more happier note, let's get started. So like I said, today is going to be my review of the final season of Battlestar Galactica. Uh, as I said before, Battlestar Galactica is probably my favorite show of all time without any form of, you know, bias. Or just That's just this adequate truth. So, let's get started. The end of the Season 3 brought the survivors of the human race to probably its lowest of low. To top it all off, Kara, Starbuck Thrace, was killed pursuing a Cylon Heavy Raider. Gaius Baltar was not found not guilty for the atrocious for the atrocities committed atrocities sorry committed during his presidency on New Caprica. And the four, the four <clears throat> of the mysterious final five Cylons have been revealed, which were Tori Foster, the aide to the president, uh, chief, the chief, Saul, Saltai, and Sam Anders. So after Baltar's lengthy trial, the fleet makes their way to the Ionian Nebula, only to be greeted by the entirety of Cylon fleet. However, waiting for them also is Kara Thrace, some seemingly back from the dead, telling people that she has found Earth. So season four starts off with the fleet still struggling to find Earth. Essentially, you have the you know dividing it over, dividing itself over which path it should set out. Uh, some are saying that they want to keep going with uh, President Ro Rosalind and the Scrolls of Pythia, which are kind of like the standard ways to reach Earth, or whether or not to believe Kara Thrace, who you know people have still struggling to time to believe that is actually her, considering she came back from the dead, and who claims that she knows the way to Earth. So the journey sort of begins with the fleet in its lowest of lows. And where all hope is lost, coupled with the civil war between the Cylons, the final steps to Earth are the darkest and most difficult. Now, here's what's good about the final season of Battlestar Galactica. For one thing, this season, <clears throat> sorry, this season is dark. It is without a doubt the darkest season of the show. But that's not, it's not needlessly slow, so. It co it's constantly reminded of the quote from The Dark Knight, it is darkest just before the dawn and the dawn is coming. The line constantly sort of came up in my head as I was, even when the worst of times, because honestly, it kind of helps you from becoming really depressed, because this show, this season is so heartbreaking, so gut-wrenching, so, you know, so depressing, that it's just, you know, you have to think like that, and that's sort of the mentality that this whole season kind of plays out, and it kind of plays out really well, because things really do get dark. On the top of that, I know there's also a really high body count. So considering season one kicked off with the total annihilation for the human race, everything in comparison kind of seems like a low body count. But a lot of the major characters die in the final season, as well as a lot of minor characters. The show makes their deaths really significant because the fleet feels emptier without those characters in them. This shows like a brilliant job on the part of the writers for giving us characters that we can give a frack about for the entire four seasons of the show. Because, you know, those people in the fleet that's all there is that's all the human race so when somebody dies it like their deaths feel much more poignant and feels much more like you know like there's somebody missing like that that presence is felt so much greater because they are the last of humanity um another thing that's really awesome was the final battle i'm not going to spoil the final battle anything, but the final battle spans about essentially three episodes long is the final battle and it's just an epic and satisfying conclusion, a pure epic tacitness. I know that's not a word, I just made it up. But, and yet, and it's just, it, that that's really the way to describe it. It really keeps you on the edge of your seat for the entire three episodes that you're there. Literally, when I was watching it, I was like this the entire time.
like that for the entire three episodes. Like, holy shit! Yeah, that was me. So, another thing that I uh, really awesome about Galactica, just sort of cinema, is just Galactica the shit. Needless to say, all the actors did a fantastic job, as usual. You know, nothing special to say about that. I said it all past for all my reviews of the past three seasons. Um, but, you know, they gave their all for these characters there one last time. They did a fantastic job. But really, it is the Battlestar Galactica that sort of stole the show for me. Um, you know, they're halfway through the season, the Galactica starts breaking down because you kind of remember it's an old ship. If you remember back from the beginning of the first season in the miniseries, Galactica was on the verge of being decommissioned. That, But it got called back into action once the Cylons attack, attacked again, and it found out that it was the only sur known surviving warship available. So when the Galactica starts breaking down, where they're desperately trying to fix it, trying to keep it afloat, you really start to feel for the Galactica. You start to really feel like the Galactica is alive. And it's only in the end you realize how much of an impact the show has, you know. How much you realize the ship has had. You know, how much of the star, you know, how much you're going to miss the Galactica. Especially when they're talking about decommissioning it, like, permanently. And it's just, it's really, like, tough talk. And really hard seeing the Galactica sort of break down. Because for the past four seasons, you see the characters living on this ship. And being a part of this ship and this crew. And the ship just becomes a vital part of this whole circle and anything else. I mean, the show is called Battlestar Galactica. And the, the writers did a great job in returning the focus back to the ship for this essential plot line. And it was just a really powerful moment seeing the Galactica break down. And it was just really tough to see at times. It was just like, you know, I kind of teared up whenever they, you know, were starting to repair the Galactica. Or you hear the Galactica start to creak. And it was just, oh, man, it was just so... It was tough. I mean, I'm <laughs> not going to lie. I mean... I don't get too emotionally, you know, connected, I guess, for these sort of things. But today, it was just, when I watched it, I was just like, this was tough. It was just, you know, because you really bond with these characters. And you really, because, you know, with there being only 50,000 people left and they're trying to find a planet to call home, these ships are essentially all that they have left. So it's just, yeah, that sort of feeling. But... Um, another thing to really round it off, it's the conclusion. The conclusion did a really sat is a really satisfying one, in my opinion. You know, kind of tied up all the loose ends, and the closure is delivered brilliantly, you know? Is there problems with the epilogue? Yes, but it's just... I, I may do a whole vlog about problems with endings and stuff like that. The ending is never going to be perfect, but for what it's worth, they did a really good job in tying the knots and finally sealing the deal, and just that sort of thing. And I think they really did a great job with it. So, yeah, that's pretty much... You know, all I have to say about the matter as a whole, I mean, the bottom line is that Galactica's last season is its darkest. But underneath it all, there's that sense of hope that, that, that drives the show to a satisfying and amazing conclusion. I mean, just to give some final thoughts on it, I think Battlestar Galactica was a really awesome watch as a whole, the entire show. And I really recommend it to anyone who's, you know, a science fiction fan of any sort because it's so radically different. This show is so radically different from what you normally see in science fiction like this, from like radically different than Star Trek and Star Wars, and in my opinion, even better than Star Trek and Star Wars. This show is just absolutely fantastic, and I really recommend giving it a try because it'll literally, I'm not gonna say it'll change your life, it won't, it's just a show, but it really will. It's definitely one of the best shows I've ever seen in my entire life. But that's just my opinion, but yeah, so. That's pretty much it for today. Um, my next video Wednesday is going to be a list of five. And for once, I always do this once in a blue moon, I actually have a list of five planned out. Ha! So it's going to be the list of five of... It's kind of complicated, a little bit, wee bit convoluted maybe. It's the list of video game sequels that I feel are superior than their original titles. So look for that on Wednesday if you're excited for it. So, alright, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Um, have a great rest of the week, and I will see you on Wednesday. Alright, peace.